everybody. I pray that you are having a fantastic, wonderful, constructive, intentional transformation Tuesday. Yep, that's what we're focused on today. God, show us the things that we need to change. God, in our life, Father, give us clear direction. Give us the desire, Lord, so that we can see the transformation that the next season of our life requires. God, give that to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone, I am Dr. Juanita Mercer. I'm the founder and CEO of Lead My Heart. And y'all, this is my leadership series, The One. And if you haven't watched any of the episodes, y'all, you gotta go watch them. This, this series has blessed me so much. And I am just so thankful that you are here watching with me <laughs> um, and just being a part of this um, time to just be in the greatest leadership book of all time. And that is the Bible. Okay. So just in case anyone was going to get confused, you don't know, nope, you don't need to be confused. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. And so these last seven episodes, we have been in the word of God, looking at different true stories. Um, and today will be a parable, um, but really examining the leadership principles that we see regarding the one. And if you're not familiar with what I mean by the one, what I'm talking about is as leaders getting back to that place where we understood that it was about the one. It wasn't about make, uh, expecting a hundred. It, it wasn't about, oh, well, a thousand people, a hundred thousand people, a million people have to be following me before I show up, before I move, before I'm engaged. We got to get back to the heart of it all, y'all. And that's when we were concerned about the one. When we would show up for the one. We would do it for the one. And today's the last episode, episode eight, find the one, just brings it all home, y'all, as to what this is really about. And I'm super excited about it. Now, there are a couple of things that I want you to do before we get started. You know, I want you to share this video on your timeline. I want you to tag some people. You can even share this video in a group and say, hey, you got to jump on. You got to watch it. But whatever it is that you're doing, get settled, grab your lunch, grab your earbuds, and let's get to it, okay? I also want to let you know that Last week, I said I wasn't feeling well. Y'all, I wasn't. After I did the video, I crashed, y'all, because I had COVID. Yes, but I'm doing much better now. As you can see, <laughs> your girl is back and better than ever. However, there still is some of that nasal stuff, right, that, that hangs on for a couple of days. So Please bear with me. I'll try to overpronunciate my words as much as possible uh, so that you understand and that you don't miss any of this good stuff, okay? Because this is good stuff. All right. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. So today we are in Luke chapter 15, the parable of the lost sheep. Mm. I might cry, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. I feel a cry coming on. Maybe it's just because of the week I've had. Um, but let's read this. Okay. Luke chapter 15, starting with verse number one. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners. Luke, buy as much? <laughs> um, also came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. Thank you, Lord. Because you know what? We were represented in here. In verse 1 and 2, we're represented here. Isn't that a great thing to know that like, there's nothing you can do that's so messed up, so wrong, so trifling, so mischievous as to 
God not wanting to have something to do with you. He still loves you through it all. That he's still willing to sit and eat with you. What? Y'all, let's be real. You know there's some people you wouldn't be seen eating with. Come on. Come on. Let's just keep it real. That's what we do here. That's how we get to the heart of the matter, by keeping it real. There are some people you wouldn't, be wanted to, you wouldn't want to be seen eating with. But Jesus says, hey, I got a seat for you. And that's what I love so much about the last communion is that we're all represented. And each person that was at the table, we see a part of us. We see something in them that we can relate to. And what a blessing. So I just wanted to take a moment to encourage you with that, knowing that God, he wants to eat with you. He's like, have you eaten? Have you eaten? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a question when people love you, right? It's like, have you eaten? And that's what God is asking you right now. Have you eaten? Because I want to eat with you. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so going back to verse three, it says, so Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? What would you do? I want you to take a moment to think about that. If you had a hundred sheep and one of them was lost, would you count it as a loss? Would you say, too bad, so sad, but 99 showed up, 99 are here, 99 are willing, 99 are engaged, 99 did what I told them to do. Let's be honest, a lot of us would, and probably on the right day, I was going to say the wrong one, but the right day, I probably would too. But we got we to gotta rethink that. What does that say? And what if you were that one? Hmm. Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Hold up. Wait, 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 what? It says, won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness? And go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it. Not saying you got five minutes. <laughs> you got one day. They got one week. They got six months. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm being convicted. Are you? This is good, Lord. This is good. Until he finds it. And when he has found it. He will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, y'all rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. See, you think we're cute just because we follow the rules or we do the right thing. Was that really any of us? I mean, really. Probably not. <laughs> Y'all, I love this. Isn't this already like convicting you about some things and some memories and some things you've said, some things that you've done? It's like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So let's first look at some things that we see in this, in this parable. You see four groups, four characters here. And you might just be thinking like, what do you mean? And then it just the, like the one, no, 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 no. It's so much more than that. You have the sheep, the 99. You have the shepherd. Ooh, coming back to him. And then you have the lost sheep, the one. The one. And then you have the onlookers. Because people are always looking. People are always watching. And I can imagine. Let's start with the onlookers. The bystanders. 
your um, constituents, <laughs> your stakeholders, and what they must say about the shepherd leaving the 99 to go find the one. Why would he do that? That seems irrational. That seems impractical. It seems like a waste of resources, such as time and energy, to do that. But the reason the shepherd did is because he saw the value of the one. And we're going to come back to that. But then you have the shepherd who wasn't afraid to look crazy and to, and to look like he was being wasteful for the one. He was willing to put aside people's opinions. Maybe he was even, let's be real. He was even willing to put aside his own flesh. Because I can imagine, had it been me, even on the right day, <laughs> okay, willing to go look for the one, I still probably would have had to deal with my flesh and put my flesh into submission and say, look, I know, you, I know you're tired, right? Get it together. I know you're frustrated with the one. You've been having conversations. You've, you've been having the meetings and still... And you're like, mm, but I got to go find them because they're still a part of this team. They're still a member. They're still valuable. And as long as part, they're part of this organization, this team, what we're doing, they matter. They matter. And let's be real. And that's why we see so much quiet firing going on from leaders and, and how they approach people, hoping that they push them to leave, that they push them to quit, that they push them to have, to have had enough, is because they no longer want them a part of the organization because they know as long as they're a part of the organization, they're a part of the team. In their heart, they know what they're willing to do for them. We got to deal with that too. We got to deal with that too, because yes, the goodness in you was saying, I know what I'm willing to do for the person that's a part of this team and this organization, but I really no longer desire for them to be here. Well, that is a conversation to have with them. And, oh, I know. I know that's hard. I know that's something that we really don't want to do. And you might even be saying, is that even appropriate to do? You mean, is it appropriate to make plans about people without them? I once had the opportunity to serve in a very unique capacity um, with, the, um, with some White House staff for a full day. And I was super excited about it. I won't go into a lot of detail because it was never that kind of thing to, to be able to just share openly. But there was one thing that they said that really made a big impression on my heart. And I apologize for the refrigerator doing this thing in the background. <laughs> but one of the things they said was, hey, not about us without us. Meaning not about them without them. Don't make plans for people and do all these big projects and stuff, but you don't bring the very people you're trying to serve and cater to, to the table. And that is something that has stuck with me for a very long time. Not about us without us. And so bring people to the table. Say, I care about you too much for us to continue going on this way. But there are some things that I have big concerns about. And I just feel like if you are in a place that you loved, if you were in a place where you felt like you really belonged and it was something that you're really called to, that that will pull out behaviors in you that I have been wanting to see. Gosh, I'm telling you, it reminds me of being in a relationship where I didn't see the things that I wanted to see in that person. And I kept saying to myself, if only they realized that if they were with the person that they really needed to be with, that this would be easy. This wouldn't be so hard. 
And that's something that's really hard to come to understand and realize and admit, but we're better for it. We're better for it. So that that's we have those people. Then we have the sheep that were on the game. They were on it. They knew what to do. They knew how to um, manage themselves, lead themselves well. They they were in there. And so imagine to see their shepherd leave, to go find the one, what that must have meant. Of course, you're going to have the naysayers. You're going to, what, really? Why, why then? Why, why does he even bother? Why does she even bother? And, but then you're also going to have the ones that say, mm, wow, I didn't know that was in our leader until now. And that matters to me. See, that, that would be me. To see that kind of behavior, I'd be like, okay, this is the kind of leader I want to serve and be in partnership with. This is the kind of leader that I want to submit to because those are qualities I want to see in myself. So it matters. But then we also have the lost one. Maybe they didn't necessarily get lost. Maybe they quit. Maybe that, sh that sheep just said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't go any further. I can't continue this journey. I can't make it back. I've, I've gone as far as I can go. I can't do anymore. Maybe the sheep is injured. Maybe the, the sheep was injured along the journey, mentally, emotionally, physically. You know, especially in this season of people being sick and stuff, it's so important that you let people know that you care about them. You know, that you reach out to them. And in this season of people dealing with grief and memories and, and loneliness and, and anxiety and depression and just so much. Are you going to find the lost sheep, the one that you really haven't heard from, the one that hasn't been as engaged as they should be, the one that's just not contributing like they normally would? Are you finding the lost one? Mm -hmm. So those are the four groups that I wanted us to first think about and acknowledge as to what, what is happening and what they're seeing, experiencing, and maybe feeling and this parable, okay? And where have you fitted to all of that? So now let's get into the fact that we have a shepherd. <laughs> I love this. Oh, I love it. Because there's two points that are so powerful that we sometimes put aside. And that is that there is a shepherd here, a leader. The best kind of leader, the leader who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. The leader who's not afraid to get into the grit, into the mess of things in order to bring all the sheep to a place, to deliver them to where they need to be. So often, Jesus, the Lord, God, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, refers to themselves, the Trinity, okay, as shepherds, the good shepherd, not the good king. So when I think of leadership, I don't think of royalty. I don't think of kingship or queenship. I don't think of, of, of that type of honor and, and, um, loyalty that we often associate with a kingship and having a kingdom. And that's, that's so much what leaders are looking like these days. And it's tearing organizations down. You're tearing people down. Because God's heart is not for you to march around and puff your chest out and to build yourself up as though you're a king but as though you are a shepherd. Caring for the sheep. 
That's where the word pastor comes from, caring, overseeing the sheep. But don't you know that God said that he has called leaders to lead people after his own heart with wisdom and knowledge? We're God's people. Are they just at church on Sunday? Please. We know fewer people are going to church on Sunday. That's not just where God's people are. God's people are in your organization, on your team. They're down the hall in that cubicle. That's where God's people are. They're all around you. And don't you know that God cares about how you lead them in the place where they spend most of their time, their waking hours, more than two thirds of their life. And that's why he wants you to be a shepherd. Also consider the fact that the first people, aside from his earthly mother and father, that, uh, that Jesus was revealed to, that God said, go see the, the, the Messiah that has come. Go see Emmanuel, where the shepherds lying in the fields nearby who were on the job. Why were they in those fields? Because they were on the job looking after and protecting their sheep. He didn't send kings and queens. He sent shepherds. Because it was a part of his grand plan, his scheme of things. And don't you know that even as God moves and, and, and carries out his agenda in the earth, that leaders are a part of that, a major part of that. And so I pray that that blesses you in this time of holiday season to really think about that. The fact that the first people that God revealed Jesus to were shepherds, leaders. Mm. <laughs> okay, so seven leadership principles that we can get from this parable. Number one, the value of individual and unique contributions. Y'all, every team member is contributing something. Maybe even lessons on what not to do. Don't miss the opportunity to even found the, find the value in those and to use those as lessons to educate your people as to what uh, should be done, what should be done and why. But everybody makes a unique comp contribution to the team. Number two, the diligence as a leader in seeking and supporting. Remember the word says that the shepherd was going to look for that sheep until he was found. And he did. He didn't forsake any resources. He didn't say, mm, you know what, I'll, I'll have another meeting, but I'm not putting on one more dime in, in development for that person. It wasn't a this or that. It was more of a whatever it takes to bring that person in. Now, I'll say this as a caveat, up to the point where you know that the place where that person is, is not the best place. But if you're the best leader for them, who can nurture them and see them for who they are, I can't think of a better place where they should be. Mm. Let, let you be the difference for that person, okay? We got to seek out and support the one, the one who's overlooked, the one who's overwhelmed, the one who's undervalued, the one who's lost and feeling neglected. That's the one we can't forsake. Be committed to their development, okay? Number three, the third leadership principle here is the responsibility for the welfare of the team. Ooh, what? Yes, the responsibility for the welfare of the team, meaning it's not on, not saying it's on them. 
hey, you got to guard your own mental health. You got to do it for you. You got to do it for them. When you understand that leaders have the most influence over people's mental health, supervisors in the workplace, because of time and exposure, you'll think differently. You will take that responsibility. Number four, celebrate successes and milestones. This is so important, okay, that we use these opportunities to boost morale and create that positive culture. And maybe it's maybe the reason why there's so much emphasis on applause and um, recognition and, and all of that is because we don't talk enough about love and we don't show it enough. And that's the way people experience what they, a little bit of the love that they need to feel. It's just by you saying, good job. Mm, but that's for another day. Number five, inclusivity and engagement, meaning no sheep left behind. <laughs> no sheep left behind, y'all. When we find the one that's saying that, hey, you're included, you're a part of here, we love you, and that matters. Number six, persistence in overcoming challenges. Persistence. Don't you see it from the shepherd? Don't you see it from the leader that, hey, it could have been that one today, but if it's two tomorrow, I'm going for them. I'm, 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 I'm going to look for them, you know? And it shows a commitment also to the goals and the vision of the organization in the most beautiful way that the 99 need to see, that the onlookers need to see, your stakeholders, your community, they need to see that. And then number seven, Y'all, the shepherd took on the weight of that sheep. And what do I mean by that? Not just physically. It says that the shepherd put the sheep on his shoulders and carried them home. But it's understanding the individual need of that sheep. Perhaps physically they couldn't walk. You know, maybe it was just the, the needing to feel the care and concern of that shepherd in a bigger way that they maybe would not have felt had he just allowed them to walk beside him. But the importance here is understanding what that individual means. And that's the heart of Lead My Heart. What's in that person's heart? Do you know their habits, their hobbies? Do you know their expectations and the experiences that they've had? Do you know their aspirations and their admirations? Do you know the roles or responsibilities that they have just not at work, but outside of work? Do you know their traumas, but also their talents? All of that is what's in our heart. And when you get to know a person on that level, which takes time, yes, it does. And a lot of resources, yes, it does, but it's worth it. Because when you have the opportunity to lead that person's heart, you're meeting their individual needs. So y'all, those were the seven leadership principles for today. I pray that this episode has blessed you. I pray that this entire leadership series has blessed you. And if you have not looked at the other episodes, please go watch them, please. And then give me feedback. Let me know your thoughts, your questions. If it blessed you, I want to know because that is a blessing to me. It only, I only do it for the one. I'm here for you. And I pray that it puts you on the right trajectory and gets you thinking about things in a way that you've never thought about them before. So I love you all. God bless you all. And remember, in everything you do, and with everything you have. Love God and love people. Goodbye.